Welcome back, folks. Quick video on tree traversals. Let's do it. All right, folks, welcome back to our traversal video. Before we get into traversals, let's do some tree review real quick. On our left hand side, we got a binary tree, really common in computer science and used a lot for traversals. So we'll be sticking with this one for our examples. Up here is the root of our binary tree where the tree starts. In a binary tree, each node can have at most two children. In this case, the root has a left child, which is this node, right child, which is this node. In this binary tree, these four nodes at the very bottom don't have any children and they're called the leaves of the tree. A subtree for a binary tree is any node in that tree as well as all the nodes that come under it. So in a subtree rooted at the node containing two, it would contain this node, this node, this node, this node, and this node. And we can describe each node in a binary tree with the BT node class where each node has a value of type int as well as a left and a right references to point to its left child and to its right child. The point of traversals is to help us figure out in what order we look at information when we're given a tree. It tells us if we should look at the leaves before we look at the root and what order we should do everything when we look at the most basic subtree. How does that work? Let's look at some tree traversals and find out. Let's do it. Welcome back. Let's get into some pre-order traversal. Let's look at this right subtree on the or this right binary tree on the right hand side to figure out how pre-order traversal actually works. So when you're given a tree and you, uh, you're asked to run pre-order traversal on it, the first thing that you want to do is print out the value of the root. So let's do that. Then pre-order has a recursive definition. So then we call pre-order recursively on this left subtree. This means we treat this node as its own tree. And we do the same thing that, that we did to this node to this node over here. So since we treat this as its own tree, we print out its value. Then we try to call pre-order recursively on its left subtree but it doesn't have a left subtree since it's a leaf node. So then we repeat the process on its right subtree, but it also doesn't have a right subtree because it's a leaf. So we finished processing this entire left subtree. So this node's left subtree is now complete. Then we go into this node's right subtree. So we repeat the process. We treat this as its own tree, print out its root value, then try to call pre-order recursively on its left subtree and its right subtree. But since it's a leaf, it doesn't have any children. So we essentially finished the right subtree. So we finished processing the entire tree. We finished the root. We finished processing the left subtree. Finished processing the right subtree. How would code for this work? Well, we know that we're given a BST node, which is our root node. When we start our method, we know that the first thing that we got to do is check if that is equal to null. So we have to check, see if it's equal to null. We can proceed if it's not if it is not equal to null. All right. So we know down here when we're given this tree, first thing we do, print out its root value. So we can go system dot out dot print. Just have to print start dot value. It's a little cramped up here, but you know what I mean. All right. So after that, we recursively call preorder on the left subtree. We know that BST nodes have a reference variable called left. So all we have to do is call pre-order on start.left. We also know that pre-order repeats this process on the right subtree. So all we have to do, call pre-order on start.right as well. After that, the recursion will take us to the deepest ends of the tree and make sure that we print out every single vowel. Let's check it out on this tree and see if it works out. So the first thing that we do, we pass this in as our root node, so we print out its vowel. Then we call pre-order recursively on its left subtree. So we now we treat this as, its, as an entire tree. So we print out its root value, which is two, and we call it pre-order recursively on its left subtree. So we treat this now as its own tree. Print out its value, we go down into six, we treat the single node as its own tree. Remember since that's a leaf, to finish processing it, we just have to print out its root value. So now we've finished this node, we go up into this node, we want to make sure that we've checked the right subtree as well. But it doesn't have any right children, so that means we've finished this tree entirely. This tree was also the left subtree of this node over here. So after we finish the left subtree of this node, we go into its right subtree, which is just a single node. Remember, for single nodes, all we got to do are print out its values, and that means we're done. We finished processing this entire tree. This entire tree was the left subtree of our overall tree over here. 
since we finished processing the entire left subtree, we go into the right subtree now. So we go into here, we treat this as, its, as an entire tree, so we print out its root value, which is 3. Then we go and recall, oh, pre order recursively on its left child, so we get the single node, we print out its root, which is 7. Since it's a single node, that's all we have to do. So we go up into here, we try to check its right child, but it doesn't have one. So that means we're done with this entire tree, and that means we finished traversing the entire binary tree. We looked at the root first, we recursively called preorder on its left subtree, then we repeated the process for its right subtree. Sounds good and all, but what if we want to check our work? Turns out there's a graphical way to check if your preorder is correct. Here's how it works. You start on the left side of your root node, then every time you pass by a node on its left hand side, you print out its value. So we pass by one, print out one, then we go down here, we stop by our good friend 2's house, so we go that. Oh, we also pass by 4, so let's print out 4's value. Alright, alright. We got a lot of friends, it seems. We're printing out 6. Then, once we reach the bottom of the tree, we go up again as far as possible. Then, once we reach as far as up as we can go, we go down again. Looks, looks like we're friends with 5, too. So we print that out. Then we wrap around. Then we start going down again. So we print out 3. Finally, we print out 7. And there's no more nodes that we'll pass on the left up. We know that we're complete when we go all the way around the tree, end up where we start. So you can see that the orders match up, and these are two ways to look at the pre-order traverse. One, the recursive definition, and secondly, the graphical approach. All right, that's pre-order traversal. Let's get into in order. Let's go. All right, folks, now jumping into in order. Again, we're gonna use what we learned from pre-order now to make this a little faster. So we got this right subtree over here, how pre or in order works is that first we tr recursively traverse the left subtree, then we print out the value of the root, finally we recursively traverse the right subtree. How would this work for this simple tree over here? The first thing that we do is recursively traverse the left subtree, which is a single node. But since it's just a single node, all we do is print out its value too. That means we've successfully finished recursing through the left subtree, so we go back into the root, we print out the value of the root, then we go into recursively going through the right subtree. Again, it's a single node, so all we gotta do is print out its value. With that, we've successfully finished this entire tree. So the code for this looks a lot like the code it does for pre-order. The first thing that we have to do, as usual, is to check if start is equal to null or not. Remember, if it's equal to null, it means that the node that you're looking at is null, which could be the case if you were just on a leaf and you were trying to check its children. If it is equal to null, nothing happens, which is what we want if it's a leaf node. All right, so the first thing that we have to do is call in order on the left subtree, so which is start.left. After we finish processing the entire left subtree, then we print out the value of our root node. So now we call system.out.print on start.value. And finally, after that, we have our final in order call. So we call in order on our right subtree. That's start dot right. Let's check out how this might work in this tree, the same tree from before on this side. All right, so let's say this is our root node. Then we know that the first thing we do is call in order recursively on our left subtree, which is this one. The first thing that we do over here is call in order recursively on its left subtree. And then this tree calls, recurs calls in order recursively on its left subtree, which is this. Okay, so now we're on this node. We call it in order recursively on its left child. Nothing happens. Then we print out its value. So we print out 6. We call it in order recursively on its right child. Doesn't have right child. So this subtree is now complete. We go back up into here. Since its left subtree is now complete, we can print out its value, which is 4. Then we try to call in order recursively on its right subtree, but it doesn't have any right children. So this tree is also done. We go up into here. This subtree was the left subtree for this the tree rooted at this node. This means we can now print this node's value, which is 2. Then we call in order recursively on its right subtree. Since it's a single node, it's 5. That means this entire tree is now done. Since the left subtree of our overall tree is done, we can print out the overall root value, which is 1. Then we go recursively into the right subtree. So we go here, first we call in order recursively to get to this node. We print out its value, since it's a single node, we're done here. We finish this 
the tree rooted at this node's left subtree, which is just a single node, so we can now print out its value. Then we check its right subtree, it's null, so now we finish processing the entire tree. One thing you might notice is that we also have a way to check for this one as well, a graphical method. So we start out over here on this side as usual, but this time, instead of printing out the value every time we pass by on the left side, we print out the value of the node every time we go under. So let's start on the left side again. We go down as far as possible, keep going down, still nothing, but over here we finally pass by under six, so we print out six. Then we go up as far as possible, pass by under four, so we print out four, and that's a four over there. Go up, pass by under two, it's two, repeat, continue, five, go up as far as possible once again, nothing, nothing. Then we got to seven, so, or sorry, we got up here, we print out the one, then we go down again, pass by under seven, that's seven, then we go up, pass by under three, and that is three. And we finish processing the entire tree at this point. One thing you might notice is that in order traversals, the same thing is looking from left to right under the tree. If you just looked at this tree from left to right in the order that the nodes are positioned from left to right, you'd see it's six, four, two, five, one, seven, three, which is exactly the order of in order traversal that we got using both our recursive implementation and our graphical method. That, my friends, is in order. On to the final one, post order. Let's do it. All right, folks, third and final traversal of the day. We got that post order traversal. Let's start again with that mini example. How post order traversal works, very similar to the two traversals from before. The only difference, this time we recursively explore the left subtree, then we recursively explore the right subtree, then we call then we print out the value of the root. So the first thing that we do, remember that this is a single node, so we just print out its value. Then we go into the right subtree, we print out its value. Then we go up into our root and print out its value. The code for this, again, looks really similar to that code we saw before. So we, again, we check if start does not equal to null because we can't call post order on a null node. And this time, our two recursive calls come first because we're exploring the two possible subtrees first. So we call post order on start.left, and that allows us to explore the left subtree. Then we call post order on start.right. So let's write that out real quick. And finally, after all of that recursion, we print out the value of the root, or of the root of the current subtree that you're looking at. So that's system.out.print. And that's start dot value. And it'll just leak over onto that second line. All right, let's see how this works over on this tree over here. First thing that we do, we start with this root and we immediately jump into a recursive call. We call post order on this new subtree. Then it immediately recursively calls post order on this subtree. And this immediately calls post order on this subtree. Well, this one calls post order on its left child, nothing happens. Calls post order on its right child, nothing happens. So finally, we just print out its value, which is six. All right, that means this left subtree is done. Now this, the tree rooted at this node now tries to call post order on its right subtree, but it doesn't have one, so that's also done. So finally, since we did recursively went through post order on the left subtree and the right subtree, we print out its value, which is four. Okay, so now, this is the tree rooted at two, and its left subtree was the tree that we just finished processing. So now we go into the right subtree of the tree rooted at this node. So we go over here, since it's a single node, all that we have to do is print out its value, and then we know that since it doesn't have any children, we're also done. So we finished recursively traversing through the left subtree and the right subtree, so now we print out the value of the root, which is two. All right, so we finished the entire left subtree of this tree, so then we go into its right subtree. So over here, we go into this node and it immediately calls post order on this node over here. Since it's a single node, we just print out its value. Since we finished the entire left subtree of the tree root at this node, we go into its right subtree, which is just null because it doesn't have a right child. So since we looked at the left subtree and the right subtree, we can print out its value. All right, since we finally finished looking at both the left subtree and the right subtree, we can finally print out the value of our root. Very long and tedious, but we finished this little tree over here. All right, looks like all our values show up in the tree. There's also a graphical way to check this, as you may have expected. Again, we start on the left-hand side, we go down as far as possible, but this time we print out values if we pass by on the right-hand side. So over here, since we pass by six, we print it out, go up as far as possible, 
four, go up, go down again, go up, pass by five, so you print out five, go up, pass by two, print out two, go up as far as possible, go down again, go up again, pass by seven on the right hand side, go up, pass by three on the right hand side, and finally, we pass by our root node on the right hand side, so that's our one. And we loop back around, and that's all our nodes. So that's post-order traversal. In this case, we again looked at the code implementation. We also looked at the graphical implementation. They both check out. This is the post-order traversal, and that's our three traversal methods. All right, folks, thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Want to see more content? Check out some CS interview questions up here in this playlist. If you want to see conceptual CS questions, check out this playlist. All right, otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.